Okay, so today I am titling this video, I have no idea what I picked up. Not that I don't know what I put in my cart at Goodwill's 50% off, but the items that I chose, I have no knowledge about. Truly, no knowledge. So let me just start this video by thanking a follower who saw me putting something in my cart or saw something in my cart on the shopping video. And her name is Lynn Sears. Lynn said, hey, I saw the such and such in your cart and this is what it is. Thank you, thank you. That saves me so much time, and we're gonna start with that first item. So as you can tell, this is a whole video of items that I picked up, the 50% off sale the other day at Goodwill. And I did plan on going to a couple of stores, and I wound up staying at the one store from 9 a.m., yep, you know me, first one in the door, till I think I left at four o'clock. I was there the whole time. I didn't even go out for lunch. I wound up buying a Reese's peanut butter cup from the vending machine and sharing it with a new friend. So that was great fun. Hi, Amber. And Amber and I stood there talking and I was eating Reese's peanut butter cups. So how could I not give Amber one? So we were hanging out, we had a great time. And I only wound up filling my cart one time, which is super rare, but I'm happy with the items I got. So I'm gonna show you the first item of what Lynn Sears told me about this item and see if you guys have ever seen it. None of these items are listed. They haven't been de-stickered, nothing. I shopped for them, I brought them home, and you guys are seeing them hot off the press. So the first item that Lynn told me about were these bookends. Aren't these gorgeous? These are so perfect. I almost thought it was like fake or man-made. I'm gonna hold one up because they're quite heavy. And as you can see, I paid $2.99 and it was half price, so $1.50 a rock. They charged me for each one. But when I saw this on the shelf, you know me, right in the cart, really quick before anybody else grabs it. I love it, but it's so beautiful. I've never seen this before. And I said, is that man-made? It was too perfect. And Lynn let me know that it's a geode rock. And a lot of times we know the geodes where the middle is missing and you see all the crystals. I'm sure we've all seen those, they're gorgeous. But this one is not hollowed out in the center. First, I thought it was like the crown of thorns that Christ wore on the cross. I didn't know what this was, but Lynn told me when it's solid, it's called nodules. I hope I'm saying that right. And I thought, oh, these are fantastic. So I got the two. So they're bookends, felt bottom. I'm thinking they're vintage, not positive. I'm gonna put vintage with a question mark in the description. I probably won't say vintage in the title because I don't wanna be misleading. But when I see that the felt on the bottom has wear and it has a little bit of discolored or a little bit of natural age, that usually leads me to have a clue when the felt is worn, the age of the felt. Does that make sense? So I have to tell you a funny quick story. When I was trying to understand what I had, whether this was man-made or natural, my daughter Lisa's at the house photographing my eBay photos today. She comes in once a week and gives me five hours of her time, which is great to help me get through some of the photographing. And I said to her, what do I have here? Is this a natural stone or is this man-made? Because nowadays a lot of man-made products really are good. You know, sometimes you can't tell what you have. And you know what she said? She said, lick it, see if it tastes like salt. <laughs> so just to say we have all kinds of craziness and no, I don't lick rocks to see, you know, if they're natural, but I thought that was a fun, a fun thing. We both looked at each other and cracked up. So thank you, Lynn, that we didn't have to lick rocks today. So the second item that I saw on the shelf were glass grapes. So I got one, two, see if I can hold them without breaking them, three. These are beautiful. Now, a lot of times when I see glass fruit, I think of Italy and I don't see markings on these. I would like to think they're Murano. I don't even know if Murano put out um, fruit shaped glass, glass shaped fruit, something, but I love these. These are beautiful. You know, purely decorative. I don't think they have any purpose. There's no stopper for it to hold liquid or anything. But um, I believe these, well, they were in a bag together. I believe I paid 
$2.99 for the three. So I said yes to beautiful purple glass grapes that I have no idea of the origin. I'm hoping to find them in Google, the same exact ones, or um, just do an eBay comp search. But if I don't find anything, I'll probably price them at maybe $1,000. What do you guys think? <laughs> I'm so kidding. Probably, I don't know, 50 for the three, but so beautiful. They'd make great earrings, look at those. <laughs> So I said yes to three glass grapes that I have no idea about the brand or the origin. So just keep in mind, if you see stickers on any of the items, everything was half off what you're seeing. And the next item says $3.99, so I paid $2. This is a ladies brawn shaver or razor, I guess it's called a shaver. And I have no idea anything about this. Now I have sold vintage razors and shavers in the past, but I didn't take time to look this one up. I haven't even tested it yet, which I will take it out of the box for you. It's in really great shape and I don't see any kind of model on it besides the name Braun. What I will do is open it up, make sure there's no battery corrosion if it has a battery in it, because you always want to check that. Items that have been corroded by a battery, you know, that have corrosion residue is going to be a very hard sell and it really depletes the value. So I said yes to this and it looks like it's barely used. It does have the little cleaning brush. Thought this was great. No, I'm not positive if this is vintage. It might not be, but I figured for the $2, I would take a chance and I will check comps and price accordingly, test it, make sure it's clean and disinfect the head. A lot of times with personal products, I'm using Clorox wipes or um, Lysol. A lot of the shoes, I disinfect the inside and then I will get it listed and I will report back on my Instagram if this is vintage and what it sells for. So one brawn ladies razor shaving machine thing tool. You can tell I'm, a, I'm an old fashioned razor girl. <laughs> But um, I said yes. The next item was too cute, probably won't bring very much, but this is a votive holder with three elephants with their trunks turned upward. Now one has his trunk, you know, connected, so it's a loop. One has it that shape. And this guy actually looks like he might be holding a stick or something. Show him, but look how sweet this is. Again, not a high dollar item. Sometimes when you're in the stores this much and you're dealing with pre-owned items this much, you just want to save things because the workers at this Goodwill come down the aisles with very large boxes. You know the big pallet boxes, we'll call them, or Gaylords? They're taking everything off the shelf and throwing it in those boxes quite roughly, I have to say, and a lot of it gets broken and gets sent to the landfill. I believe all the glass and breakables is going to the landfill from that store, which is very disheartening. So I go around saving what I can, as long as I know I can get a few dollars from it. So that's what the bottom looks like. $2.99, so I paid $1.50. And yeah, how cute are they? So sweet. Now just know, again, none of this is listed in my store. A lot of times when I'm making this video, it takes probably up to two weeks for me to get it listed. That's because a lot of what I'm buying, I'm not even showing. A lot of it's bread and butter, I'm getting through that. And also right now we are getting ready for the resellers meetup. So my hours are limited, but I am getting listings on. They just might take a while if you see something you'd like in my eBay store, which is linked down below. Below. Okay, so next up is a pair of shoes because you know me, I can't do a hard goods haul without showing a pair of shoes. And these are Chung Shi, C H U N G S H I. Now, I don't know a lot about these. All I know is they bring decent money, and I've sold them before. I believe they are for building muscles within your body and your walking. I did put these on and walk around the house a little bit. Not for me. Let me just say that. The bottom has a bump right in the middle of the sole and it causes you to really try to balance walking in them. But I said yes to these. I believe I've sold these before for, I'm going to say $60. So these are pre-owned and you could see $6.99. So that means I paid $3.50 and they're in great shape. They look like they've been worn once or twice. So I said yes to Chung Shi walking shoes. This is a leather belt that is encrusted with stones, as you can see. And if you notice, there is a stone missing, which I saw in the store, but I still felt this was good enough that somebody would want this. 
And the stones are, I believe they're genuine tiger's eye. I don't know my natural gemstones so well, besides diamonds, of course. Um, yeah, so they look like they're tiger's eye. I'm gonna hold that as close as I can. Maybe you guys can tell me what you think. The quality of the leather is really nice, and is it branded? I did pay $1.97. Well, I paid half of that, so about a dollar. And I don't see any marking on this, but I always check the holes. They're in great shape. The buckle looks good. It's kind of like a distressed looking silver tone buckle. And I thought this was beautiful. It would have been nice if it had all its stones, but I'll still take it. So for a dollar, I'm hoping to get about the $30 mark, even with the flaw. I think somebody's gonna want this. So I said yes to this belt. Here is a bowl of floral wire. It's not really wire, it's metal. It's a brass bowl. And on the Goodwill shelf, let me just get the other piece, it was sitting like this. And I was like, what am I looking at? I didn't even try to figure out what I was looking at because when I turned this part of it over, it said made in Italy. So at that point, I really don't care what it is. If it's made in Italy and it's brass and it's heavy and it's beautiful, it's going in my cart. I'll figure out what the use is later on. So then I realized that this stand, it's meant to be like this. But here's the thing. I don't even think these two go together. I think this might be for a different bowl and this might be maybe a fruit bowl or a bread bowl maybe. So you guys can let me know if you've ever seen this. Like I said, gorgeous breasts. This is the real thing. This is the beautiful breasts. A lot of breast items that are lacquered or it's like brass over another, you know, steel or whatever, it's just the look of it is not as pretty in my opinion. So made in Italy, really beautiful. Now there is one flaw on this. It has a separation right there, if we can see that. But still, I felt this was gorgeous, definitely vintage, and I said yes to it. I paid $3 for the two pieces. Well, $1.50, I'm gonna have to keep correcting myself for the two pieces. And let's take a look at this one, see if we see any kind of marking. Not seeing anything. Hmm. Or it could be a crown. I'm the queen. <laughs> I should do that as a thumbnail. Hey, you know, this almost fits my head. <laughs> See if I can balance it. Okay, wear this throughout the whole video. How about if I do it like that? Ouch, that hurts. <laughs> so this is very versatile, whether you want it to hold a bowl and serve your guests, and then at the end, put on a crown and be the queen. A little trinket box with the letter S on top. Unfortunately, my name doesn't start with an S, but I thought this was really pretty. It's all velvet lined, and I don't think the metal is anything. It's probably like stainless steel or, I don't know, chrome, something like that. $1.50, trinket box, blingy, blingy initial, really pretty. So that's what made me put that in the card. Remember how I told you guys that I don't pick up single coffee mugs? Yeah, I lied again. I couldn't leave this one behind. I think it's an illness. <laughs> so this one is a cat one. Look how cute this is. So cute. And I knew this would fly out of the store. If I price this low, this is gone. This will be gone very quickly. And it's got a little print of a cup inside. Let's take a look at the bottom. What does this say? Hanging out. And that's all I can see because Goodwill put their sticker over it, so you can't read any of it. Let's see if I can quickly peel this off. 2009, I paid a dollar for the cup, by the way. Paris Clayton Wares, artwork courtesy of Wild Wings Lake City, Minnesota. So yeah, that's what that's about. So this is the first item that I know what this was out of this whole haul. So you would think after seven years, almost seven years, October will be my anniversary of completing seven years selling on eBay. So I keep saying six, six and a half, seven. But um, yeah, out of this whole haul, I think this is the only thing that I know what this is. So there's that. So I don't know why you guys are listening to me, but yeah, great fun. Very appreciative. Next up is a camera lens and this is Olympus Japan 
And what does the writing say? Vivitar Series 1. Now I comped these. Um, another shopper gave this to me. She said, hey, I don't want this. Do you want it? So thank you very much. I comped this. This won't bring a lot of money as far as I can tell. Probably about the $12 to $15 mark. So not all camera lenses are, you know, hitting it out of the park. But I still felt that somebody would want this. You know, photography is such a common craft or such a common hobby that I think camera lenses and cameras get so much attention and there'll be somebody who will want it. So I gratefully accepted it from her. She was looking for shoes and yeah, has all kinds of numbers on the side. I know nothing about camera lenses, zero. And, but I said yes to it. And it came in this really cool padded bag. So what did I pay for this? I can't remember guys, I think I paid $3, somewhere right around then. So it's always worth it to me to take a chance for $3 because I don't mind long tail items. Speaking about long tail items, I'm gonna show you guys something that I found. It's gotta be, I think, almost a year ago. I think I found this last summer, still in my store, still hasn't sold, which is fine. It's gonna be a long tail item. I knew that. This is gonna take, I'm gonna say three to four years, I'm gonna predict to sell. Now, why would I pick up an item that's gonna take three to four years to sell? Number one, I loved it. Number two, it's a piece of history. Number three, I think the value, you know, the profit I will make and it will be amazing. I paid $15 for it at a yard sale. And number four, I just wanted to and it's my store. I do what I want. So ready for this find? Hang on a second and I'll get it. I don't believe I have ever showed this to you guys. So this is a genuine Civil War musician's sword. At least I think it's a musician's sword. So I found this at a yard sale. This is what it looks like in its sheath. And when I pull it out very gently, it's not sharp at all. So I think um, the listing, I'm pretty sure my listing has all the information about it. Because again, one of you followers was kind enough, I'm sorry I forgot your name. Um, he was kind enough to write me and give me the full history. You could tell he was really an expert and knew what he was speaking about. And it's in my store. I couldn't even tell you what price I have on it, but it is marked. There's all kinds of markings on it. And again, in my store, if you want to read all about it, but I said yes to a Civil War sword. Very excited to find this. And when I went to that yard sale, I was moseying around. I was talking to the owner. He was an older gentleman sitting in a lawn chair. And I said, tell me about your sword. What is the sword? And he went on to say that his father was a mason. And when the father got, what is it called? When they come into the masons, maybe initiated or sorry, I don't know the proper term. He said that his father used this sword in the ceremony. The father had bought this, I believe at an antique shop and used this sword. And that was enough for me. I said, okay, I will take that. I believe the date on it is something. I can't see it from here. What is the date on this? Hang on and I'll get a magnifying glass. Okay, I am back. I got a magnifying glass and looked at the date, 1863. Pretty exciting. Now, even if this won't bring a high dollar amount, say they're common, I would never walk away from something like this. If I can afford it, I'm buying it because it preserves our American history. And I want somebody, you know, that would appreciate this to have it. So if somebody was really interested in this, they were in reenactment or they had, you know, museum or some way to preserve it and really give it its its proper place. I entertain offers on things like this. So I said yes to a Civil War sword, which is not from this haul, but I wanted to throw it in here. So there's that. So what other channel can you come to where the creator puts a fruit bowl on her head and has a Civil War sword in her hands? <laughs> all craziness here all the time. Keeps life interesting, don't you think? To have a good time, even though we grow up and we're not children anymore, it's very good to have a lighthearted spirit and just to enjoy our jobs. And that's one of the pleasures of this job that I will always appreciate. All of the fun, all of the treasure hunting, it makes me feel like a young girl again. And I love that part of it. The sense of wonderment, the sense of like going out and getting what's mine and treasure hunting, all good, all the time. So very appreciative. Okay, what are we on to next? What shall we do next? Let's talk about a leather briefcase I found.
So this leather briefcase was in this bag, in this dust bag, and then it was in this plastic bag. So all I saw, what looked like a pillow, that's what it looked like to me. It was on the bottom shelf. You know me, I love digging on the bottom shelf. Let me just say too, if you have a thrift store that's gonna run a 50% off sale, when you get into the store, if you're one of the first few people, you wanna look in the hidden spots and the low shelves because people come in the day before, a couple days before, they choose their good items and they hide them on the bottom shelf. That's been my experience. So whenever I'm at a thrift store, any thrift store, for their 50% off sale and I get in the store, this time I was number one in the store, of course, I always look at the bottom shelves and I found this. So I paid $5 for this. Now I don't know this brand and I'm not saying this is gonna bring a high dollar, but this was definitely worth picking up for $5. So like I said, it has like a silk, this is probably, it feels like real silk, truthfully. I was gonna say it's probably not real silk, but this has a real silk. It could be polyester. By Komals, K-O-M-A-L-S, Passion Leather. So I'm gonna take the case off. This is brand new. Gorgeous, gorgeous briefcase. Look at the leather on that. Really nice, double straps. Kamal's Passion Leather is marked inside. Now, I did run comps on this, and this is not a high dollar item. I'm expecting this to bring maybe $60 to $70. If this had been a different brand name, this could bring up to three, dollars $400. But Kamal's does not bring a high dollar amount. I think the quality is beautiful. The leather feels really nice, but that's what it brings. So um, I will be pricing this accordingly, but yet yeah, still definitely worth picking up for the $5. Our last item that I wanna talk about, again, know nothing about this, not a thing, not a clue, Epson film adapter. So it came with the paper, <laughs> the ditto, the cheat sheet, and I took a look at that. I still don't understand what this is, film adapter. And this is what it looks like. So of course I will do research and I will know what this is by the time I list it. I did run comps on it and I could probably get 25 out of this, I'm thinking. And what did I pay for this? Let's see if the price is still on it. It is not, I believe I paid $3 for this. Somewhere right around that mark. You know me, I don't pay a lot, pretty much don't pay a lot for anything. And yeah, Epson. So it came with that piece, <laughs> a piece of paper this piece, film adapter. So I don't know, do you put your pictures in it and it scans your photos onto a hard drive? That's my guess, not quite sure, but uh, we will figure it out, I will comp it. I will put it into a Google search and read about it so that next time if I see one of these on the shelf, I understand what I'm looking at. That's also important when you're looking at items and bringing items home. Guys, do the research and learn. Learn as much as you can because each time you learn about an item will be better for your next shopping trip as you learn more and more. You know how I feel about that. The education is everything. So you really want to, you don't have to go down a rabbit hole and spend four hours you know, reading about the item unless it's really interesting to you. But you do want to learn what you're selling and become really knowledgeable about the items out there. So um, end of my speech. So I think that ends our video today. I think I got everything in and hope you guys are all having a great day. Please hit the like and subscribe button and as always go out and get what's yours. Mm -hmm.